So good morning, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. Uh, my name's Travis. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Tour Radar. Um, the accent you can hear there is I'm Australian, uh, but I've been living in Europe for 12 years now. And I'm the, the founder of Tour Radar, which is a startup, uh, been around for five years now. And it's a, it's a real honor for me to be here today because uh, usually the uh, hotel industry, the flights, uh, car hire are all the topics that are talked about. So it's actually great for me to be here today to, to talk about a, a big part of the industry that has kind of been ignored for a long time uh, and that we're really focusing on and really trying to bring online from a traditional offline sense. So uh, a lot of the stuff I talked about today uh, are about our experiences uh, as a startup, uh, how we've come to where we are, and hopefully uh, there's some takeaways for you guys to, um, to see. So just so I can get an idea, how many tour operators are in the audience here? Are there many or none? No? Okay, excellent. <laughs> cool. So what is Tour Radar? Uh, we are a online platform with a mission to make booking tours online easy. Uh, as you know, tours are traditionally uh, an offline product people go to see uh, a travel agent for. Uh, it's a very complex product, uh, which is one of the reasons why uh, most people still like to have a hands-on approach. Uh, and we feel that that can actually come online and we have made big inbound um, routes to actually bringing that online and it really is actually all about uh, how you present things and, and the, the customer service side of things. So that's what I want to run through a bit today um, to try and show you how we've done that uh, in terms of uh, partners that we work with. Uh, we have 300 companies uh, including Intrepid Travel, G Adventures, Contiki, Top Deck, uh, some of the companies that you may have heard of, and we work with a lot of niche operators as well. So a small uh, trekking company in Peru or a small company in uh, Tanzania. Uh, so we really work across uh, really global companies uh, down to really niche guys. So we, we really try and provide solutions uh, and technology that helps uh, all the different range of people. Now at the core of everything to do with uh, selling online, distribution, you guys all know that you're from the hotel industry, the flight industry, uh, the cruise industry, you realize that APIs are super important. Uh, the issue is that the, the tour industry has been living in the dinosaur years. So the technology just hasn't caught up. Uh, many of our partners still use Excel spreadsheets, spreadsheets to manage their inventory. So it's that type of lack of technology and, and savviness that we're, we've really had to educate over the last five to 10 years. Uh, so as you know, the API is the core part of it. And even with the big guys, we've been educating them along the way saying, get an XML feed. Uh, because the way uh, you have to think about this is, if I want to actually buy a tour which has lots of different products of what transportation am I going to take? Am I staying in a three-star hotel? Uh, is there a tour guide? What optional acti activities there are? It's not just a simple click, book, a hotel or a flight. Uh, so there's lots of different parts that you need to consider uh, and that information needs to be in your inventory, so in your data that can be provided to OTAs. Uh, can be provided to GDSs, they're starting to pick up their game as well. So the information, even photos, great photos, great content like videos, are all things that make it possible for someone to say, okay, I have everything I need to know about this product, I feel safe now to actually book it. And, and that's really been a, a crash course for us uh, in actually trying to say what information do people need uh, for us to then have the confidence uh, that a person will put their credit card down and buy a high, high basket uh, 1,500 euro tour directly online without actually talking to one of our uh, uh, customer su support agents. So another part, uh, big part of things is trust. And as we all know, people love badges, they love awards, uh, they love certification. So the more of those that are, appear on the site, uh, even from local authorities, so if you sell to a particular market, uh, things like in Germany, for example, uh, TUV is, a, is an authorized uh, accreditation agency that people respect. Uh, so if a, a customer sees that on the website, there's an instant kind of affi affiliation and saying, these guys must be good at what they do. Uh, as we all know, things like articles in uh, New York Times, uh, anything that can give a bit of uh, 
credibility to, to the business uh, helps with the, the confidence of the consumer. Uh, in terms of custom support, super important. We've got a policy on Tour Radar, seven minutes is the response time. So obviously that can't be done for every company, so for a local tour operator, they have their local working hours. Uh, so it's more just setting expectations. So if a customer leaves an inquiry or asks a question, that they get the expectation saying, pick up the IP address and say, look, in six hours time, our office will be opening uh, and you won't get a response before then. So you set the customer expectation level and they're not thinking, Shit, why haven't they replied in the, last, uh, in the next two minutes? So it's really telling them what they should expect. Uh, and that's been a big part of what we've learned um, on Tour Radar. In terms of payments, uh, there's a real issue uh, for small and medium-sized businesses to get merchant accounts. And that leaves them to have to go back to PayPal, which is one of the only options out there. And it's very clunky from a customer point of view, uh, but also very expensive for the merchant. Uh, so payments are super critical that they're in the local currency of your source market. So if you're selling to Australians, sell in Australian dollars. Uh, the payment companies say it's about a 25% uplift if you can show uh, the local payment methods uh, and the local currency. Uh, so it's super important to get that done. Uh, we've actually just launched a, uh, a payment solution for small tour operators uh, called the Book and Pay button, where they can actually use our merchant account and use our whole booking system uh, to take payments directly from their website. So it saves them having to go through the hassle and, uh, or set up a PayPal account. They can actually do it directly through Tour Radar. Uh, launched a couple of weeks ago, already got two or three operators on board, uh, and we think it's something that can really help a lot of these small guys just get up and start selling online to markets they never could have got to before. Um, so, reviews, gold dust. They're the gold dust of the internet. It's what TripAdvisor built their business on. Uh, we all know from personal experiences, buying a digital camera on Amazon, you'll read the reviews. Uh, so for a high basket value product like ours, reviews are super important. And it's something being the core focus of the business from the very beginning. Uh, and it really differentiates us. And from if you were a tour operator or an OTA, as you know, reviews just help buyer confidence. Uh, so we really focus on driving that. Some techniques that we've used is uh, we've obviously got a mobile optimized site uh, where the tour operators, they get back from the end of the tour and the guides actually hand around a tablet uh, or a mobile device uh, with a Wi-Fi connected so that the people, they're in that moment. They've had such a good time on the trip they want to leave something or they, they are inspired to actually leave a good review or actually tell their real thoughts. Uh, because when you get the person back to the office, they're going to ignore that email you send them or they'll delete the email. So really try and get them in that moment to leave uh, the feedback about the company. And another initiative that we've uh, done is actually called the Guide of the Year Award, uh, where the guides are actually uh, given a bit of uh, importance as well. So, because they're the ones, they're the face of the company. Uh, they're the ones that you're, they're selling the product, they're, they're making the experience for the customer. Uh, and we're trying to bring a bit of credibility uh, back to them. So we have a yearly award that also uh, incentivizes them to drive reviews for the company that they work for. Now in terms of customer acquisition, we all know there's a plethora of uh, options out there. Uh, there's a few things that have worked very well for us. Uh, one is contests. So we do sweepstakes and giveaways uh, where we really, the aim of it is to acquire email addresses. Uh, so the more email addresses we can get, the bigger, the bigger our funnel and the bigger our list um, to try and bring people back to the site. Uh, so that's from a more inspirational side. Uh, as we work our way down to actually high purchase intent, uh, we have uh, the email marketing, so just retention, bringing them back on a weekly basis, reminding them what we do, inspiring them with good content. Uh, refer referrals and loyalty program. Super important because tours, you don't book, uh, like Larry Page said, you won't use it every, you know, twice a day. Uh, you actually only do a tour once a year if you're lucky. So trying to, to get people coming back to you after a year you really need to, to have an, a retention program, drip campaigns, emails, uh, to make sure that they do come back to you. Um, SEM, so we do use uh, AdWords uh, quite a lot uh, in terms of what we use predominantly is search. Uh, we are a startup, so we don't have the, 
the pleasure of, of having big budgets for branding and that type of thing. So we, we more spend on performance uh, and very much a, a lot of long tail uh, keywords. Uh, but also we do go down the generic routes to try and drive uh, obviously that higher interest uh, and we do see really long lead times. Uh, obviously for this type of product uh, it can actually be 80, 80, 90 days before someone goes from first touch to actually booking with us uh, and that's a path that I'll show you a little bit later uh, but it really is about just being front and centre and being in all the different channels uh, and that's when we come down to SEO 40% uh, of our bookings actually come from SEO because we've done such a good job in terms of reviews and user-generated content. So uh, it's a really important to be tapping into people. They want to share this content. Travel is inspirational. They're, they're trying to make their friends jealous. So if you can provide them with tools and ways to actually uh, to, to share that uh, message, then they will actually do it. Uh, mobile responsive site, uh, we invested in that right at the beginning uh, because we felt that it was the way things were going and in, in hindsight it was a, a great decision to do that. Uh, Stephanie mentioned this morning that around 20-22% uh, of bookings come from uh, mobile. Uh, we must be just doing okay because we're at about 23% uh, which has surprised me when I started seeing the numbers because a 1500 euro product you wouldn't think that you'd book on a mobile device or a tablet. Uh, but if you provide the right user experience and the right interface, uh, people actually do use it. And I think it's all about presenting the right information at the right time. So obviously we don't try and jam everything in there. We do dumb it down as it gets smaller uh, on, the, on the mobile. Uh, but we do have the people sitting on the bus. They've had a bad day at work. Uh, they type in, yeah, Greek islands and then they start to see and look. So it's more inspirational, top of funnel stuff uh, on the mobile. Uh, and from that, we try and get them to leave an email address or we try and get them to do something on the site so then we can actually bring them back to the site uh, at a later date. Uh, and obviously knowing what they've done, so in terms of personalization and recommendations. A big part of the industry, and Nicola touched on it, I think attribution is one of the biggest things that all of us in this room, uh, us included, still don't have a good enough handle on. Uh, it's so difficult these days with the different devices, the different uh, user journeys, the different customer journeys. Uh, an example we have here is uh, just the different ways. They, they start with an affiliate, they'll come, they'll enter their email address into our newsletter, they'll receive the newsletter, enter a contest, uh, they'll go through the, um, the PPC. So they really flick between. And we use analytics, so Google Analytics is fantastic to a certain point. Uh, but if you really want to dig down into what is unique about your product or what's the user experience, uh, we started to introduce uh, things called micro-conversions. So uh, many of you out there probably do the same. Uh, we implemented a saving a PDF, so a brochure download of a particular tour. Uh, so they have to put their email address in, uh, they download the brochure. So it's just a small signal of where that customer is on that journey. Uh, things like asking a question, uh, wanting to leave a 48 hour hold for a particular tour, uh, speaking uh, in instant messenger chat with our customer support team. These are all micro conversions that we use now uh, in our AdWords account and also uh, just within our own funnel optimization is to say, okay, they've come through there from that channel, uh, what's the conversion rate that they've got through to, to leaving a brochure or asking for a brochure? And then we optimize our drip campaigns, so our email drip campaigns, uh, to really try and get that shortened time. So instead of it being 10 days from when they download the brochure, uh, we actually want to get that down to four days. Uh, so what can we do? How many more emails or how more targeted can we send the drip campaign to bring those people back? So I'd really recommend you uh, look at how you're, you're tracking. Uh, we use a, a self-built cookie tracking uh, system and it really starts, and we do that in combination with the AdWords API. We also use the Google Analy An Analytics API. So it's really combining and actually having a dashboard where we can start to fully understand our customer and say, okay, they're at this stage of the funnel, how can we get them to the next stage? And then obviously, how can we get them to the final stage? Uh, so that's been a really key part of, of us 
modifying how we've done things. Previously, we were like hammering everyone, booking, 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 and it's just not the way. Uh, and it also, especially when you take mobile into account, you have to have a different experience and different way for them to actually work their way down the path. Uh, so yeah, that's been our experience of, of trying to, to bring tour operators uh, into the 21st century, uh, and hopefully we can continue to, to innovate, uh, provide solutions that makes this sector actually come a lot more online. So instead of 70% being booked by travel agents, we actually try and get that to 50%, 30%, because if it's done it right, we can bring a lot more online sales. So um, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks.